there, and welcome to the Poop and Pin Podcast. It is August 29th, and this is episode number four. Um, my name is Megan Nodecker. I am a knitting pattern designer from Abbotsford, BC. And you can find me on Instagram at Pip and Pin, on Ravelry as Knit Pip and Pin, um, Facebook as Pip and Pin as well, but I don't really use Facebook too often. So Instagram, Ravelry, there's also a Ravelry group called Pip and Pin, surprise, surprise. Um, yeah, I actually, if you go to the Ravelry group, I just started a new thread um, in the in the forums there and it is called ask me anything so if you have any questions for me um, about knitting or technique or designing or my process or just me in general or my life and <laughs> I'll do my best to answer um, I won't answer you know super personal things but <laughs> maybe in a maybe in a you know private comment um, <laughs> But yeah, so head on over there, and if you have any questions for me, I'd love to, I'd love to answer them. Um, it's hot again today, and it's yeah. My task for today, after this, is to go and get an air conditioner. I mean, I know it's the end of August, <laughs> but I just looked at the weather, and it's going to be another two weeks of like thirty degrees. So. Yeah, Justin and I decided it was time to go and get a little cheapo window air conditioner because, I mean, we have a small place, so that should be, with some strategically placed fans, I'm sure that'll be enough to, to cool us down a bit for the rest of the summer. And then we'll have it for next year, too. Um, the reason I bring that up is because I have a fan right here because it's too hot. To do it without it and it's it's like not even 10 and it's boiling um i also have a light so that doesn't help but but yeah so i have a fan and sorry if you can hear it i'll probably be able to take it out um take out any noise in editing but um sorry if uh, if i can't um i'm not turning it off it feels nice and it kind of makes me feel like a supermodel so there you go <laughs> uh yeah, I guess I'm just going to dive right in. Um, there's no real admin stuff, so I'm just going to start. Um, I have one kind of, kind of finished thing. Uh, it's not blocked yet because for the past week we have two fans and one of them broke. So Justin was fixing one in the middle of the living room, which is the only place big enough to block anything so yeah my my carpet was used so I have finished something it's just not quite blocked yet anyways what I finished was um <laughs> looks this is what I've been calling my my noodle shawl and it is um from one of Caitlin French's sock blanks um and she did she dyed these with um, with natural dyes, um, all wild crafted. Um, so she harvested them all from from around where she she is um, in Vancouver. And this one was dyed with tansy and logwood. And these sock blanks, they're 80% merino and 20% nylon, and they're 115 grams. I mean, they're not skeins, they're blanks, but they're 150 grams. So they're, they're quite big. And um, like this is, this is not blocked. So this is all just noodle wiggly, wiggly goodness here. And I just, uh, I love the fate of it. Um, you can't actually see any of what I've done because it's not blocked. And like, you probably won't be able to tell right now either, but but there's lots of like drop stitches and short rows and just lots of, of fun invisible things in there <laughs> right now. So next next time I will have an actual block picture of this or I'll have it to show. Um, yeah, and once I get it blocked, I'll take some pictures of it. And I'm hoping to start testing it soon. Um, 
I would really like to get this released um, before Knit City because she's going to be there and she's going to have these and I just, that's my goal, to get this one released before Knit City, um, which I know is, is really, really close, so I don't actually expect, like, if I do start testing, I don't actually expect it to be done, I just want to get some, some projects started um, for it. There was something else I wanted to talk about with this. I don't remember, but I'm sure it'll come to me later. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, and so that is really my only kind of even a little bit finished, finished thing. Um, I started a lot of things, which is really weird. Um, I usually, I usually have one maybe two things on the go and I'm looking in front of me and I have four and I've been like actively working on all four of them which is I thought would be super stressful but it's actually it's been kind of nice because they're all kind of different weights I have a pair of socks I have a fingering weight and then I have a worsted weight and I have a bulky weight too so I mean it's kind of nice to to just be able to pick up whatever I feel like knitting at the time like some of them I can take to the park and some of them I can can't because it's bulky sweater. Anyways, I guess I'll show you what they are. Uh, the first one I showed last time and it is going to be another Afterthought Everything sock. And so there's that. And this is made out of a Patton's Croy sock. Socks? Patton's Croy socks. This is the gray, gray brown marl. There's a label there if you want to take a peek. And it's just, yeah, it's wool, nylon, 75, 25, 50 gram balls. Um, I had gotten a question from my friend Joy, um, and she was wondering if, you know, when I'm when I'm ready to do the heels and things on this one, if I could show her how to, how to do it. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, then I thought maybe, you know, maybe that's something that, um, that other people might want to know as well. So I think what I'm going to do is once, um, like, cause for these socks, if you, if you haven't heard about them before, um, they're kind of a monster of my own invention, invented if, you know, Elizabeth Zimmerman people out there. But anyways, what I do is uh, just knit a big tube and then for both socks. So I do two socks at the same time, just one big tube. And then once I'm done, cut them in half, add the cuffs and the toes and the heels, everything after. That's after that everything. Uh, so yeah, Joy had asked if, if I would show her how to do that. Um, and I said yes. And I was thinking that maybe once I'm done once I'm done this one, I can make a little video um, of how to do that if, if anybody's interested or maybe, um, like, I don't know, what do people like? Do you like videos or like photo tutorials? I know for, for certain things, like I'm totally photos all the way because I like to kind of read and go at my own pace, but, but videos are nice too. <laughs> so yeah, let me know, let me know what, your, what your preference is, a video or, or I could just do both, who knows? Anyways, yeah, that's the plan for, for those ones. Another pair of socks for for winter. And, oh, I just kind of wound it all up, but let me, I want to show you something. Because I was wondering, like, I'm not really, a, I don't usually knit socks, and I certainly don't knit them this quickly. Like, usually a pair of socks is a six-month thing because they're, they're the thing that I work on when I don't have anything else to work on. Like I'll take all, sometimes it'll live in my car and if, you know, Georgia falls asleep or I have to wait for something or whatever, then, then they're just there and, and they kind of get a couple rows in here and there. I don't usually actively work on them. But then I, like, this is a lot for me since, since last, last time. Because there's the, if you can see there, that's where I was last two weeks ago. And that's a pretty good chunk. And so I was thinking, why, like, where is this sock knitting coming from? I don't understand. And I think it's a combination of two things. First off, my newly found 
love of Magic Loop on these um, lovely new red Chalgu needles. And I got a couple weeks ago. So there's that. Also, um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago or so now, we inherited a uh, an exercise bike from my mother-in-law. And so it's living on our patio. And what I've been doing is watching podcasts on the exercise bike while knitting socks. <laughs> so Justin thinks it's hilarious and he thinks I'm ridiculous but I'm just yet sitting there pedaling away on my little bike moving and so that's where that's where all this sock is coming from because everything everything else that I kind of have is a little bit too big like there's nowhere to really rest you know you can't really rest your arms when you're biking so you want something light and little and socks so that is where my sock knitting comes from um not complaining I really like hand knit socks um and if you were watching last time, you saw the pair of socks that I knit for Katie. And so she got those for her birthday um, last week. And she really liked them. So that's good. So maybe I'm going to be the, you know, maybe once I get my own stash up, I'll be the person that knits socks for other people. <laughs> uh, the second thing that I've kind of been working on, and this one I haven't done too, too much on. And I've talked about it quite a bit already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it but it is my um, Gramps cardigan and the one that I'm making for Georgia. If you don't know the story, it's sad and you should just go watch the previous episodes. <laughs> There's only four of them, three of them, three previous ones. Uh, anyways, so this is Georgia's Gramps cardigan, the beginning of it, and I've just split for the sleeves and body there and Georgia picked out these colors herself um well she yeah she kind of picked out some different colors and then changed her mind but anyways these are the colors that she that she chose uh it's going around along you know it's a it's a tin can knits pattern they they just go they go like clockwork they they work exactly how they're supposed to um I uh, yes so this is the combination, the blue and the pink is Barocco Vintage DK, and then the gray, the light gray, is Cascade 220. And those are, I don't know, the Barocco I think is a wool acrylic, and then the, the Cascade is just wool. I didn't really write anything down for these ones. But yeah, now, so now I'm just in the part where I get to, you know, work the body straight. And um, in the pattern, you work the whole body and then you add, there's two little pockets in front and then you add those at the end. Uh, I'm going to knit the body until the top of the pockets, cast off, cast on to make the hole for the pocket and then um, finish the pocket from the back. Um, that way I don't have to maintain my, my striping pattern, which was the the not so fun part of the last Gramps, little stripey Gramps that I made Georgia. All right, and um, the third thing that I'm working on is for me. And it is totally selfish, and it's probably the first thing that I've knit for myself in, I mean, aside from, from the pair of socks that I did, I haven't really knit anything for me that wasn't uh, design in a really long time. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about it. I always do that. I'm, so, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'll like start talking about something and then before I actually get to my point, I'll like give the backstory of... A... Anyways, that's just how my brain works, so sorry about that. Now I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I design, I, I remember what I was going to say. I knit things for myself while I design. So like I will, my samples are all usually in the large, extra large range because that's what size I am. And I want to wear my own samples, um, you know, when they're done, kind of when they're done being samples. Uh, plus then I don't have to get anyone else to model, which is nice. Well, Katie 
Katie can model um, the smaller ones, which is also nice, um, being able to have, have both of us to do that. And two different, yeah, totally different body types, which is awesome. Anyways, total weird tangent. What I am making myself is a um, Mount Pleasant top. And this is one of my own designs. Um, you can find it on Ravelry. And uh, it's basically just a little a little crop top with some lace at the bottom. Pretty simple. Worked in the round, green, green weight. So this is, I hope that you can see it, it's a little dark. I just finished up the lace and I'm just starting the body. kind of see it. No, there's a lot of black. Black on black on black. It's my life. Um, I am knitting this with um, Sweet Fibers Cash Merino 20. And it's a 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon in marshland. So it's this one here. And hopefully you can get, like, it's, it's this lovely black, green, there's a little bit of brown in there even. Just like gorgeous, gorgeous. I love all her yarns. They're they're just always so nicely done. Um, and this is something that I picked up last year. Yeah, I picked up last year at Knit City uh, on a whim, kind of. I kind of was thinking I was going to make be making a cardigan out of it because I have four skeins. Um, but I never, I just never really found one that I really wanted to make so I never did um and then I I figured you know I I want a Mount Pleasant that I can wear with um some of my skirts and and things and I want a different color I've been seeing like there have been some amazing amazing Mount Pleasant tops pop up um if you if you check it out on on Ravelry um, and look at all the different projects, like there's just it, it's blown me away how how wonderful they all are. And um, there's also a, a hashtag on Instagram that you can check um, Mount Pleasant Tea and yeah, just some some beautiful beautiful tops that people are knitting. And so I was really inspired to knit um, knit another one because why not? <laughs> Um, the, the sample one that I have is this, uh, also Sweet Fiber actually, in the um, in her sock yarn and in moss, which is like this green, red kind of mixture. Um, maybe I'll pop a picture up on there. But this, I've, I've seen a couple dark ones and I was just like, yes, this is what I need in my life. So I decided to make a, a dark one and I, I will not use all four skeins of my yarn, but you know, I, I thought that I was being kind of wasteful, but then I was like, you know, I just need to make things that I that I want to make. Like, I, I can't just save this yarn. It's a beautiful yarn, and that's what I've been doing. I've been saving it um, for a cardigan that may or may not happen. So, anyways, I'm just making a top, and I'm going to have extra yarn. It was my, yeah, it was my Knit City treat. I... I was torn, I remember being torn at her booth because there was this, this in Cash Merino and then there was the sock base which was a little bit cheaper, um, but I just really liked the way that the dye took on this one, like it's so rich and, and soft, like it's a really really soft base so I decided to treat myself and then I was like oh how many skeins do I need? Well, maybe I'll just buy two and I can, you know, do something and da 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 And no, I ended up buying every single skein that I could find, which was four. So I'll have extra, but that's okay. I, I really love the color and I really love the yarn and I'm just, I'm really excited to, to make myself something selfishly. <laughs> not, you know, even though it's a design of mine, it's not full, like, for designing and it's just going to be mine. <laughs> um, I'm going to modify it just a touch. Well, one of them is not even a mod, but I'm, um, I think the sample that I made was, was an extra large, and it had about two inches of ease or so. And so I'm going to 
do this next size up because I want this one to be a little bit looser. So I think I'm doing a 2x. And how big is that? I don't know, maybe like 48 inch bust. I'm not sure exactly, but it'll have about six inches of ease, which will be, I think, a little better. I'm also going to make it a little bit longer. Um, one of the things that I found with the just the sock yarn and the way the yarn behaves like it has nylon in it so it, it it's sock yarn it's supposed to be stretchy and what i found is if i wear it too much it stretches horizontally and then kind of comes up comes up a bit and while i really like like i like it short i'm going to add a couple inches to this one just to counteract that a little bit because i would rather have it a touch longer um than than too short um and i don't really like i i see myself wearing it with with skirts mostly um and i i don't want to have to wear something underneath like i just want to be able to wear i get really hot <laughs> and so i just want to be able to wear the shirt and not have to worry about you know wearing an undershirt or, or something underneath because too much of my tummy is showing <laughs> but yeah so that that is that's that one and probably um oh yeah and I should start I should start alternating my skeins I was going to do the lace and then start alternating but then I got I brought it to the park one day and spent I, yeah me and Georgia went to the water park and she spent two hours there and so I just kept knitting um because you know, I didn't, I didn't want to sit there with nothing to do, so, so I knit it, and I'll, I'll probably wind up another skein and start alternating. Uh, the next one, and then the last one that I have, um, that I've been, like, I've started this three days ago, and this is a new design that I'm working on, and it is something that has, I don't know if you hear that, there was just a really loud, stupid car. Um, this is something that's been in my head for a while now, and I have had the yarn for quite some time too. It's just, it's, it was taking a long time to like fully form itself in my head. So I did some sketches and like, I really liked the sketches. And then about a week ago, I kind of did all the measuring and, and got the measurements of what it was going to be. And then yeah, three days, two days ago, three days ago, um, I stayed up until three in the morning and like did all the math for it. Uh, and then like, I'm, I'm almost separating for the, for the sleeves. Um, yeah. So how I, how I usually design is, um, oh, that's what I kind of wanted to talk about with the, with the other, um, the Caitlin French shawl, this one. Because how I usually do things is I do all the math and I do all the grading pretty much right away. So the pattern pretty much, I might do it in sections if it's something that I'm not quite, quite familiar with. Um, but for the most part, the pattern is written before I start knitting it for all sizes. Um, I just think that that's just how my brain works. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be able to like just make it and then try and remember and then try and grade it. It just doesn't, uh, no, that would, that would confuse me, I think. So yeah, what I do is I, I do my sketch and then I do, um, I figure out, you know, the, the garment measurements. So I figure out how long, you know, what I want the neckline to do or how long I want the sleeves or, you know, how much ease there's going to be and what shape it's going to be. And then, um, and then I go into Excel and, um, it's kind of nice because my size is like right in the middle <laughs> pretty much most of the time. So I, I kind of figure out for, you know, what the proportions of everything and then get it all, get all the numbers and, um, and everything. So that's how this one, this one went. I, I sat down, I spent, you know, three hours writing the pattern or getting all my numbers and everything. Um, and then I just cast on and started knitting and just haven't really stopped. <laughs> And it's um, the, the, the reason why I was bringing up 
this one is because this is one of the few things that I've ever designed where I didn't do that. Um, I just kind of, I had a vague idea and just decided to go with the flow and where things took me and it was a strange weird journey and I don't even know how it's turned out yet. Anyways, what I'm working on is a, a sweater. Um, and it looks huge because it is. Um, so this is the top, the neckline, and the sleeves. Um, and this is, uh, how's the best way to show this? There we go. So you can see that there. These are um, simultaneous set-in sleeves. And I, about a year ago, I probably got the book called um, Knitting from the Top from Barbara, Barbara Walker. And she tells you how to, how to design things top down and seamlessly, which is, you know, wonderful and kind of what everyone's doing likes knitting because seeming is mostly terrible. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and this was a sleeve construction that I did for unwittingly my very first sweater that I knit, um, the olive green one that I knit for Justin, had the, these simultaneous set in sleeves. I had no idea what they were at the time. Um, like, I don't know what this <laughs> sweater was when I started making it. I just told Justin to pick a pattern and he ended up picking like in my first sweater, saddle shoulders and simultaneous sleeves and um, yeah, kind of patterned and I, like I, if you've never knit a sweater before, just find a reputable, you know, person and follow their directions. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Um, I, I literally, for the whole top of the sweater, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like, well, I hope this is right. If not, you know, and just take it apart. But <laughs> Yeah, anyways, the most complicated, you know, sleeve construction. Well, no, it's not even complicated. It's just, it's not complicated. It's super simple. It just is a weird shape at first. Because when you knit it, what happens is, I mean, the saddle shoulders were a little bit different. But this one, you kind of take it, and you start at the top shoulder, and you knit a bit down, and then you go to the other side and you knit a bit here and then you kind of join it all together and pick up stitches along the top of the sleeve cap so you end up with no I can't show you but you end up with this big long rectangle with things at the end so you need to have a cable needle and a big long one and it's really awkward for like four rows and then all of a sudden you just have sleeves like it's kind of, it's similar to like a raglan, but you just get these really nice, really nice sleep caps. Um, yeah, so that, um, something, this is also something that I've never designed before. So figuring out some of the intricacies of the, because you have to think about everything at the same time. You have to think about your sleeves and your bust and your armhole depth and like you, there's just kind of a lot going on to figure out as a as a when you're designing it and it almost got scared and I almost stopped <laughs> and you know changed it to something else but I didn't um, I actually ended up like I've kind of gotten to the point where I do most of my stuff on the computer um, I used to do most of my designing on paper because I'm a very like visual person so seeing it on the paper really helped me when I when I was just starting and now I've kind of gotten to the point where I don't really need to do that anymore except for this one and so last night and I was figuring out you know all the numbers for all the different sizes I had my graph paper and my pencil crayons and you know making all these little charts and things and yeah, Justin was sitting there laughing at me because <laughs> that's what he does for the most part. Um, 
yeah and and so I'm really really excited about this one like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it on because so yeah you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna be like little sleeve caps it's gonna be kind of long and with some ease just a big cozy cozy winter sweater the yarn um, that's what I haven't talked about. The yarn is from Cascade Yarns, Eco Plus, and it is one of their greatest yarns, in my opinion. Um, this is the Charcoal Gray, and it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool, and like these things are giant. Like my ball winder will not do it. I have to wind these ones by hand. Um, how many, how many things is in there? 250 grams, so 478 yards. And yeah, it's a, it's a bulky, bulky weight yarn, which is probably why this sweater is knitting up so quickly and nicely. And it feels like, yeah, I've, I've, I've literally been spending two days on it and it's flying. Um, when I, I threw it at Justin to, to feel it, cause he, he loves woolly sweaters and things. And he was like, man, it just has the perfect amount of you know, perfect amount of scratchiness. Um, he said 13%, 13% scratch is like the perfect, perfect amount of scratchiness in his opinion, in case anyone was wondering. Also in this one, I'm using some of these guys. Not really wanting to focus, but they're little kitty head Stitch markers, and these are um, the Brass Kittens from Firefly Note, and she has lots of really, um, really cute knitting things. Um, they're a little bit big, so I probably wouldn't use them for, you know, like they're, they're fine for this wool because it's bulky, and, you know, it's, they're just so cute. Um, and then, yeah, this is the smallest, the smallest ones. There's also Brass, brass Cats, I think, which are a bit bit bigger and you could get them in silver as well yeah little kitty stitch markers make me happy I think that that's it for for the things I'm working on that's it for things that's a lot that's a lot for me to be working on at one time uh, yeah I don't know I don't know where this came from but I think just I don't know. Just having options is really. I'm like looking at everything right now. Having options is is really nice. Mm. I just about got away with not having any stash enhancement because, yeah, I, um, I don't have a huge stash. I don't want a huge stash. But um, the other day, Justin was working in. Um, Port Cowles, and that is very, very close to 88 Stitches in Walnut Grove, all kind of in Langley. Um, so I got a call from Justin um, while he was at work saying, hey, you know, why don't you and Georgia come down and bring me a coffee and then you can go to the yarn store. <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. So that's what happened. And what we got there, what I got is I finally picked up some of these guys and these are bry spun stainless steel sock blockers um, I've been wanting some of these for a while they're just the yeah the wire the wire sock blockers I have some of the blue plastic um, plastic ones from knit Fix, which are which are fine I mean they're not they're not bad or anything they're just blue <laughs> and these ones are way prettier uh, and I like them a lot more so I think I'll actually um, I'll probably use them a lot more and maybe display things or something I can use them to show my finished socks because apparently I finish socks now uh, the other thing that I got was some since I'm on this sock kick I got some sock yarn and this is Joma yarn. There. 
And this is for Saccharino base, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and there's 115 grams in here. This is the magnitude colorway. <laughs> it's funny, when I was deciding what color to get, like because there were there were quite a few um, different options that she had there. And um, the thing that got me on this one was the name. <laughs> like all the ones that I wanted were kind of in the similar blue, purple, pink, white, you know, gray family, um, which thinking back now was probably, you know, they're probably all there on purpose because they would make a beautiful fade. Um, but this was, I think, the darkest kind of one, most saturated one. Uh, but the name got me. <laughs> and once I read the names of all of them, I had to get this one because um, if anyone out there has watched Parks, or not Parks, um, Community, there's Magnitude, and Pop Pop. So that made me giggle when I was in the middle of the store. So that's that's how this whoop, falling apart. That's how this one came to be. So yeah, that one will get wound up and made into socks after my other pair, even though I just want to start them right now because the yarn is is really nice and um, dyed in on Vancouver Island. Yeah, so super local. I remember last year at Knit City, her booth was uh, literally right across from ours. So I was just staring at this beautiful yarn for two days straight, three days straight, because we set up on the Friday, but <laughs> yeah, just, just beautiful. And I'm sure she'll be at Knit City. I think she's going to be at Knit City this year again. So definitely go check, check her stuff out. Um, what else did I do this week? I did lots of things. Oh, um, I went to the fabric store because I decided that I wanted to start um, sewing more. Um, and because I've been sewing more, my sewing machine has been having issues. Um, it's my mom's old sewing machine and it's the one that I learned on and I love it. Um, but I don't think it's ever been serviced in its entire life. <laughs> so I at one point had like the top of it off and figured out I fixed that somehow I don't know there was this little thing that kept coming loose and jamming um, so I fixed the top and then something with the bobbin was going wrong it was catching and like so I had to take all the bottom apart and fix that and so now I like really know this machine but now I think the timing's kind of off because it keeps skipping stitches so I might I might just bring it in or I might find some YouTube videos to teach me how to fix it myself because that's what I do. Anyways, I went to the fabric store and I got some fabric to make myself a skirt um, because that's what I, that's the first thing that I wanted to knit. And I'm not using a pattern for this. Um, I'm just doing a, uh, like a gathered rectangle skirt. Um, there's lots of uh, tutorials on on YouTube um, so I'll, I'll link to the ones I'll put the ones that I used in my show notes um, but yeah I'm just doing a simple rectangle gathered skirt with there's pockets in here too but this is the the fabric it's just a light um, light cotton I might have to line it but you know I probably won't because I have things that I can wear underneath it and that won't really be an issue. Yeah, I can see the light through it totally, so I'm gonna be flashing people. Anyways, yeah, that's just gonna be my um, my first sewing project in a very long time. Um, I got it at Overseas Fabrics, um, which is a um, a fabric store in Abbotsford. It's kind of hidden away in one of the back streets somewhere. But if you if you are ever in Abbotsford, you should definitely go there. Um, they have like it's huge and it's just rows upon rows upon rows and the the people that own it are um are from india and they so they have lots of like sari um like sari silk and just beautiful beautiful silks like some of it is 
in a glass case <laughs> because it is so expensive and like lovely but they're like it's not an expensive store by any means but they just have like really really beautiful things as well um they're actually very reasonably priced um there's a fabric land in abbotsford here too which it just i don't know i always feel better about shopping uh at places that are owned by you know, people instead of people. Um, but anyways, yeah, no, great, great little shop. Also upstairs they had all the like a, kind of upholstery stuff and some vinyl. And so I went to check that out because I've been making the, um, these guys, I've been making some of these for Knit City, um, the little project bags. And I just wanted to see what, um, what kind of stuff they had up there that could be used for that. And um, what I found was this stuff. Oops, can you see that? Kind of. So it is, it is vinyl. Um, it's a little bit lighter than what I've been using. So I'm going to have to use some interfacing with it. Um, this is olive green with these black floral print on it. I couldn't, I couldn't not get any. <laughs> so I think I got three meters of it or something. Um, but yeah, those are going to be some project bags as well for, for Knit City, possibly online at some point down the road. So I had a question about project bags um, because I don't use, like I just don't have a lot of them. Um, I kind of use random things <laughs> as, um, as project bags. I would like some more, but um, right now I'm only making this size, which is great for um, like single skein, single skein things like socks or hats or whatever. Um, but I want to make one bigger, um, not super big, like not a sweater bag yet, I don't think, but um, like a medium sized one for two or two or three skeins to fit in there. Um, my question is, do you prefer um like taller and skinnier ones so like or fatter and like wider ones like like keep more to the shape but have it a little bit wider and a little bit taller or have it the same and then just just taller i don't know i don't know what um i just don't know what what people like so <laughs> if you could let me know in the comments or or wherever uh, your preference, that would that would be helpful. And then maybe I can make up some up for for Knit City. Uh, ooh, this is, my battery might die. The the other thing that I just wanted to talk about was um, last week, Katie and I we're able to do a mock-up of our Knit City display. And we share our display with, um, with our friends at Got Craft, uh, Andrea and Rob. So they have, we have a 10 by 10 booth and we usually get a corner. So they have one side and we have the other. That's right, yeah. So we have one side, they have the other side. And then we have some space in the, in the back for, for ourselves. But this year we decided to like try and make a wall and we thought that we were just not gonna be able to do it because it was crazy and we wanted we wanted to make a pegboard wall and we finally like we just decided to try it out and our idea worked and it's sturdy and it's not gonna fall on anyone like I don't know if anyone remembers our our display from last year like it looked really nice but it was about to topple over like at any minute um this one super sturdy and and I think it's gonna be nice and like kind of simple um what on Thursday when when we were doing it I I did do an Instagram story about it so if I I think I saved most of the pictures so I'll put them up if if I if I can find them all but yeah I am so excited and it's getting so close like it's it's only a month away um less than a month no, oh, no, one month, well, just, just over. But in that time, like I'm gone for a week. Um, I also booked Justin and I a vacation. Um, 
kind of for our anniversary. We're going up to Blue Lake to like a little cabin and going to do some hiking and he's going to, you know, do some hunting and we'll probably bring the canoe. And I think Georgia's going to come up for, for half the time and half the time she's going to be with our in-laws. So I, that's going to be really awesome. But that's also a week before Knit City. So all of my prep time is kind of gone. So I'm trying to get as much done as possible before then. And our display was like the big kind of question mark of this year and it just worked out perfectly and it's easy to set up and easy to take down like um, what we did basically is got some shelves from Ikea just some standing shelves and some pegboard and strapped the pegboard to the shelves with zip ties <laughs> and then yeah we'll have some some cool other stuff going on but like how anyways it's awesome and I'm really excited and that just made me really really excited for Knit City like I just I can't stop thinking about it and every time I like I don't know anytime I see someone I'm like ah Knit City it's so close <laughs> so I'm really excited to to meet people too um I feel like in this past year I've made a lot of um I made a lot of friends on line who either live in Vancouver or um, lots of people from Alberta as well and Saskatchewan and just different parts of everywhere still hi new friends <laughs> um, yeah and I'm really excited to be able to meet some of these people in real life and actually like get to say hi and not just type at each other on the internet so yeah my battery died uh, just as I was gonna wrap things up here so it's Trudge for a couple minutes while I was cleaning up, and hopefully there's enough <laughs> enough battery left. I just wanted to say thank you so much for for watching, and um, I hope you come back. Give me a big old thumbs up if you like it, and hit subscribe. Um, thanks so much.